the title of today's message of Neil, The Spirit-Filled Warrior, taken from Judges chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. We have two thoughts, the secret of his strength and the spiritual declension in Israel. Othniel was the first judge of Israel. It was said in Judges 3, verses 8 and 9, that God raised him up as a deliverer to the children of Israel, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel and went out to war and defeated Israel's oppressor, and the land had rest 40 years. Who was Othniel? or Othniel. He was first mentioned in Joshua 15, verse 17, as the brother of Caleb, the son of Kenaz, who married Caleb's daughter, Aksa. He was the spirit-filled warrior who rose up to the challenge that Caleb posed to the people of Judah against the sons of Anak. Judges, uh, Joshua chapter 15, verse 13 to 19, gave us this account. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he gave a part among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua, even the city of Achba, the father of Anak, which city is Hebron. And Caleb drove thence the three sons of Anak, Shishai, Achiman, and Talmai, the children of Anak. And he went up thence to the inhabitants of Debir, and the name of Debir was before was Kerjath Sefer. Kerjath Sefer, you would uh, take note of this name, is a name that is, will be uh, much mentioned uh, during the time at the end of the judges when uh, Eli, the high priest, died and the ark of God was taken captive by the Philistines. Right, the Philistines took the ark and thought that they have captured the strength of Israel. But God uh, plagued the Philistines and they had to send the ark back. And when they sent the ark back, it was this place, Keras Jarim. It was the place where uh, the cut uh, by divine uh, guidance well, came back uh, to Israel of the Lord. And so here you see the picture of the man Caleb who said, He that smiteth Kejath Sefer and taketh it, to him will I give Aksa, my daughter, to wife. And Othniel, Othniel the son of Kines, the brother of Caleb, took it. This is the man Othniel. And he gave Aksa his daughter to wife, and it came to pass as she came to him that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wouldest thou? Who answered, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a south land. Give me also springs of water. You see, the land that was given to them was a dry patch. And so, uh, Aksa, on behalf of the husband, asked of the Lord for the south land, in which were the springs of water, the upper springs and the nether springs. We know that Caleb was one of the two faithful spies with Joshua, the son of Nun, who surveyed the land of Canaan. Caleb was 40 years old then. He was a man filled with the Spirit of God, full of faith, who followed Joshua, and, and they too, the two followed the Lord wholly. Numbers chapter 13 is a description of uh, what happened at that time. While they were still in the wilderness, the Lord had brought them uh, out to Sinai, and there they were, uh, they were supposed well, to uh, en route after to go to the promised land. Uh, but uh, many things happened. Uh, this was the account given in Numbers chapter 13 of the spies that were sent in to survey the land. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. And in verse 6 of Numbers chapter 13, you see Caleb was the man to represent the tribe of Judah, the son of Jephunneh. And verse 16 uh, speaks of them being sent out by Moses. And these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land, the 12 spies. And Moses called Oshia or Joshua, the son of Nun, Jeshua. And Moses sent them to spy the land of Canaan and said to them, get you up this south way and go up into the mountain and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the people, what the land is that they, may, they dwell in, whether it, is, it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the land was the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they sent they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob, as the men come to Hamath, and they ascended by the south and came to Hebron, where Ahiman, Shishai, and Talmai, uh, you remember these names that were mentioned? Now, these were the men uh, that the children of Anak that were there uh, in the land. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt and they came into the brook of Ashkor and cut down from tents a branch with one cluster of grapes and they bare it between two upon a staff and they brought of the pomegranates of the figs. The place was called the brook of Ashkor because the, of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from tents and they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought them back unto them and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came into the land whither thou sendest us. Surely and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are warred and are very great. Moreover, we saw the men of Anak there, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb, this is the man uh, who was the father-in-law of Othniel, steal the people before the Lord and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. This was a man of faith, not a man of weakness, filled with the spirit, not filled with the arms of flesh. But the man that went up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we, and we they brought up an evil report of the land which they searched upon the children of Israel, saying, The land through which they have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that saw in it, that we saw in it, are men of great stature. And they asked, and we saw the giants, the son of An sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our sight. As grasshoppers, so we were in their sight. So you see that in Israel, there were different type of men. Right? Spirit-filled men, faithful men, very few. Uh, this was Caleb. Uh, after uh, another 45 years uh, from this incident uh, in Joshua chapter 14, uh, he was still going out to war, still full of faith, full of valor, um, Verse 5 of Joshua 14 says, And the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgah, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto them, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, 
concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I. So Caleb was 40 years old when he went out as a spy. When I, when I was I, when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart, Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. You see, to do the Lord's battle, you need men of faith, men of courage, men who are willing to obey and follow the Lord. And Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, this forty and five years. Ever, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day forty and five years old, eight, fourscore and five years old, so he was 85 years old. As yet I'm as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that, in that day how the Anakims were there and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be that the Lord be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed them and gave Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron for an inheritance. And Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day, because he full, wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron was Kejath Abba, which Abba was a great man, among the Anakims, and the land had rest from the war. And Othniel was following Caleb, probably his spiritual mentor and example. Caleb was his father-in-law, and we can observe that he was a brave, brave warrior to fight the Lord's battle. And this we see uh, again repeated in uh, Judges chapter 1, verse 8 to 19, which we uh, saw briefly. Uh, when we begin our study. Now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem and had taken it and smitten it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. And afterward, the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites that dwelt in the mountain and in the south and in the valley. And Judah went against the Canaanite that dwell, Canaanites that dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron was Kajath Abba. And they slew Shishai, Tahiman, and Tell my, you remember those names, uh, the sons of Anak. And from thence he went against the inhabitants of Debir. And the name of Debir before was Kajath Sepha. This was the name that we mentioned. And Caleb said, He that smiteth Kajath Sepha and taketh it to him, will I give Aksa, my daughter, the wife, and Othniel, Othniel, the son of Kinest, Caleb's young, younger brother took it, and he gave him Aksa, his daughter, to wife. And it came to pass, when she came to him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field, and she lighted from off her ass. So this is a little bit more description of uh, what we saw in, uh, earlier in the book of Joshua. And it came to pass, when she came to him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field, and she lighted off the ass, and Caleb said to her, What wilt thou? And she said unto him, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a south land. Give me the springs also. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. And the children of the Kenites, the Moses' father-in-law, went up out of the city of the palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which lieth in the south of Arad. And they went and dwelt among the people. And Judah went with Simeon, his brother, and they slew the Canaanites and inhabited Zephyr and utterly destroyed it. And the name of the city was called Hophmah. And Judah took also Gaza with the coast thereof and Ashkelon and Ekron. These are all the 
uh, Philistine cities. Uh, they took it, then later on it was taken back from them, as we will see later in our text in Joshua, uh, Judges chapter 3. And the Lord was with Judah, and he drove out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron. He, also, he was also appointed to the Lord of the Lord to judge Israel before correcting them spiritually and organizing them to defeat their enemy. So uh, Othniel was the man that God would raise. Verse 9 of our text says, And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, and the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenes, Caleb's younger brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel and went to war and delivered Shushai Rishatayim, the king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. The Lord did so, and his hand prevailed against Shushai Rishatayim. He was a faithful servant of God, a spirit-filled warrior. And Paul said of such a man, a spirit-filled man in Romans 6 verse 22, but now, being freed from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. And verse 17 to 20 is described uh, uh, the, the picture of the man of God filled with the Spirit of God. But thank be God that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. How can a man serve God except he put his own body in subjection? I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What a wonderful prospect we would say for the Christian. He serves the living and true God. He no longer serves sin. His life bears witness for God because God's character is formed in him, he bears the fruit of righteousness. How can a man serve God except that the Spirit of God uh, uh, is in him and that he would uh, uh, not be a servant of sin and show forth the character, the fruit of holiness? And the end of his life's journey is eternal blessing. Jesus describes such a man. Come ye, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and he gave me meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me drink. I was a stranger, and he took me in, naked, and he clothed me. I was sick, and he visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? And when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee, and the king said, shall answer and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done unto one of the least of my brethren, ye have done unto me. There is much that the Lord laid upon our hands to do, to serve him. He tells us that we are to serve him by serving the people of God uh, that, brings, that he brings into our lives. What good we do in Jesus' name for a brethren, God will reward. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. He was able to lead the men of Israel to come back to God by his devotion and consecrated life before God. So when God brought him as a judge, uh, in Israel, the first thing he did was that he arrested the spiritual declension that was in Israel. 
Now, what was the spiritual declension in Israel? It was this, it's described for us in verse 1 to 8. Now, these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel had not known all the wars of Canaan. The nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them. Right? God allows us uh, to be tested, to be tempted. Um, he plays traps, landmines our way, uh, that we may be vigilant, we may be observant, uh, that we may uh, be uh, on the guard. And here we can see our text tells us that there was a kind of a complacency in Israel. They were in the land. The land was fruitful and that they had all that they need. It's easy in a time of prosperity when we had plenty right, that we drift into spiritual declension. Uh, and here is described only that the generation of the children of Israel might know to teach them war at the least such as before knew nothing thereof. Why war? Well, we can understand why war. When you, we train a man uh, for, in the army, uh, you would see how uh, the spiritual, how the discipline uh, comes into picture. Uh, the man who is a soldier who is prepared for war uh, has to be uh, uh, very fit and very uh, skillful uh, so that he can be sent forth to defeat the enemy. And here we see that the Lord left uh, uh, the enemies. Who are they? The five lords of the Philistines, all the Canaanites, the Zidonians, the Hivites that dwelled in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hamon unto the entering in of Hamath. And they were to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. So we are told here what remained of the old inhabitants of Canaan. Uh, the five lords of the Philistine, Ashdod, Gaza, Ekron, Ga Gath, uh, Ashkelon. Uh, these are the cities that uh, we know uh, has been um, uh, a part of uh, the Philistine territory uh, during the time of uh, David. You remember uh, it was during that time uh, that uh, there were war with the Philistines and how, well, one of the uh, great men of the enemy was the big man called Goliath and how uh, he challenged uh, the people of Judah and how everyone right, was very, very frightened. Right? And King Saul, what did he do? He was also frightened. He said that anyone who uh, would defeat Goliath I will give the hand of my daughter in marriage. And then uh, came uh, David uh, to the battlefield. Uh, he was bringing his, uh, the things to uh, the, the supplies from the father to his uh, elder brothers, and he saw the challenge uh, of the enemy. And there he came uh, filled with the Spirit of God, just like this man, Othniel, uh, how... Uh, the church of God needs uh, in every generation uh, spirit-filled men uh, who would be willing to follow the Lord wholeheartedly devoted and single-minded. Um, and uh, here we see uh, these nations that were left there uh, in the land uh, disturb the peace of the people of Israel. And we are able to see and notice uh, how uh, God left them there uh, in order to uh, correct them right, when they were wayward, uh, 
the enemies would come and disturb their peace. And, and when the enemies come, well, you would see that uh, they, are, they live a, a very different life right? from the peace that uh, they used to enjoy. Now, the peace is gone. Right? The enemy comes. Uh, as we think of the situation uh, in the world today, right? you realize uh, that, um, well, um, we see things uh, marching in the opposite direction. Uh, now, uh, away from peace, um, we see uh, many danger signs. Right? We see uh, danger signs of uh, war. We see danger signs of uh, financial uh, meltdown crisis. We see uh, uh, great uh, 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 disturbances that is to come. Uh, so there are those who uh, think, uh, what do we do in these uh, uncertain times? Uh, how do we prepare? How can we uh, be, make a difference? Well, you see that during time of hardship, as opposed to a time of luxury and a, a time of complacency, uh, you would see that uh, as Matthew Henry would say, they must sometimes wet in blood and not always in milk and honey. God sent uh, the difficult times uh, in order that the men, the people of God, uh, may uh, be awakened. Uh, sometimes, right, we say to their uh, spiritual in their spiritual slumber. Uh, Israel was a figure of the church militant. And the soldiers of Christ must endure hardness. Uh, Paul says, No man that warreth and tangereth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may choose him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And here, the Lord allowed Israel to go on, right? go on uh, in, in the battle against its enemies uh, when he allowed right, the enemy to be around so that it would test them. And you see that uh, Israel fell. Uh, corruption that is left remaining in the hearts even of good Christians Right. If we are not on guard, uh, you realize that we can fall. And therefore, we must take heed. And God uh, sent us trials, well, oftentimes uh, to toughen us, to strengthen us. And, but for the people of Israel, uh, they fell into temptation. Uh, our text tells us that they intermingled uh, with the people of the land. Verse 6, And they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. For Israel dwelt, verse 5 says, among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Parasites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. So they allow themselves right, to mix and intermingle uh, with the evil that was in the land. And what happened after that? Well, you see that uh, they fell. These intermarriages which joins them with the Canaanites, uh, simply uh, disrupted their lives, right? Imagine uh, a Christian marrying a non-Christian. Right? Then where to, when, when it comes to the Lord's day, one said, let's go and worship. And the other said, that, no, I don't know your God. Uh, what, what do you mean by worship? Uh, let us go to the beach. Let us do something else. Uh, there are better things to do. 
And so what happens to the one that, uh, uh, and the other? Well, we said, uh, yeah, I, I will have, I will read uh, many copies of the, the devotion book uh, because I can't go to church. Uh, my other half won't go. Well, you see, after a while, the faith grows cold. And then comes the children. So what will happen? You see that uh, not just the intermarriage, the intermingling with the intermarriage, then the idolatry. Right? We begin, they begin to worship right, the gods, the dark side, right, the gods of the land. And this unequal marriages, right, corrupt, uh, the, all the, uh, the goodness that uh, God's word can bring uh, to, to uh, a family. And so here you see that the corruption uh, became uh, very uh, grave. Right? And our text tells us, uh, that we, the, we see uh, Israel uh, departing from the Lord. And you can see this cycle, uh, which will be repeated again and again. Uh, sin, verse 5 to 7. Servitude, verse 8. Supplication, verse 9. And salvation, uh, verse uh, 9b to, to 11. Uh, uh, they fall into sin, and God allowed them to be tormented by their sin, by their enemy. And then they began to cry out to God for help. And then the Lord will send help. And the Lord delivered them. But this was the cycle. And why did Israel uh, have, have to go through so many of these cycles? Well, because they have ignored the warning of the Lord. And they have intermarried with the uh, natives, and the consequence is that they adopted their seductive methods, their seductive cultic ways. Uh, Deuteronomy 8, verse 1 to 3. And the, all the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe, Moses says to Israel, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord your God which swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thy heart, whether thou would keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might take thee Make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. The Israelites here then realized that he had depart they had departed from God. And they cried to the Lord for help. And the Lord sent uh, Othniel to deliver them. And Othniel was Caleb's nephew. Right? He was... Uh, described as a spirit-filled man, and he judged Israel, and the land had rest 40 years. In conclusion, the Lord raised spirit-filled men to stand in the gap to walk in the paths of righteousness. Jesus, while he was on earth, went about uh, every city and village preaching the gospel and healing the sick. And he saw that the people were lost and they were scattered. Uh, and the Lord said that truly the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest, men who would truly uh, mean business for the Lord, uh, not having their own agenda, uh, personal agenda. Uh, there's no help. 
uh, with personal agendas. So may the Lord help us so that we may be able to do something good for the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy uh, mercy in granting us Thy word so that we may know how to order our lives. May Thy Spirit fill us to guide us. This I ask and pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.